Good day, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Tom's Tips Case of the Week 2021. Welcome and thank you for joining us. The purpose of this is to give you an opportunity to get some tips from Dr. Hirsch around how to use isolite with different cases. Today's case is using isolite with cementation and bonding. Good day, Dr. Hirsch. How hey, are you? Good morning, Orlando. Good to talk to you. Hope you've had a great weekend. Uh, yeah, so today what we're going to do is just going to give you a couple of little tips that I've learned about over the years in cementing and bonding crowns. Just some of the cool little gadgets that I've got that just kind of make my life easier. So what we're doing today is we are uh, bonding a crown to tooth number three. We're bonding a crown to tooth number 31. You'll kind of get a theme throughout this whole time. I don't usually do single procedures. I don't like to do it. We talked about that the whole time. You know, opposing procedures, upper right, lower right, just makes life really easy, makes dentistry really profitable. Uh, not the money is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's better to have it than not to have it. So that being said, let's get into this video where I'm going to be bonding up to tooth number three first and then down to 31. Let's roll them. Okay, here you go. So here we go. Start the video right there. The first thing is I isolate a tooth number three, remove the temporary. This thing right here, which I'll tell you later, stop that, bro. Okay. This thing is the coolest thing. I'm going to tell you where to get this later on. But that is an articulating paper holder that holds articulating paper. And it also, I use it for plain old Teflon tape, plumber's tape, to put that in between the teeth so that my, you know, these resin cements, they just bond to everything. They stick to everything. It's really a pain to get off. So anything that you can do to mitigate the cleanup of resin cement, do it. So uh, with that little instrument right there, I put the Teflon tape in and you can roll. Okay. Put that on the uh, mesial of the uh, number two. And then I'm going to put it on the distal of number four. Keeps that area really nice and isolated. isolated. I use a little Explorer or a Hartzell instrument just to kind of tuck that down under the gum line to make sure that nothing is getting past that area that's going to bond to the adjacent tooth. And here we use that pulling it forward. Put my finger on it. You can see you don't have to use two hands to put on Teflon tape anymore. You know, using two hands inside the mouth can sometimes be really a challenge. So I've got this thing isolated right now. Um, we'd already done our, our etching. Oh, and so we'd already we'd already etched this thing already. We've already primed and bonded it. And so now what we're going to do is just get right into the cementation procedure. I used a medium DV isolate isolate right there. One of the cool factors is I can utilize the amber filter on the isolate and really have great visibility without having to shut down lights so that we don't uh, prematurely uh, cure the cement. Some of you may be lucky enough to have operating operatory lights that go amber or your headlights that go amber. This is just another light that goes amber. So we've dried the whole thing off and I've got the crown filled up with the cement that I like to use. I think this is Rely-X in this particular case. I've got a few of them. Hold it in place and give it a real quick cure, just a spot cure for a second. Pause it right there for a moment, Ro, if you would, please. So with all these different resin cements, the, and a really important thing to do is to test these things outside the mouth with your curing light, see just how long it sets. Some of these set, you, you, you blink and the stuff is already set and hard. Other ones, you've got a few seconds of, of light curing before it turns hard. So always test these things outside the mouth. It'll make life really easy for you rather than waiting and curing the sink to a hard point. So I on this particular cement with Rely-X, it's about a one second uh, quick uh, quick touch on the buckle, one second quick touch on the lingual, go ahead. And I can see that the material just sits there, it's not falling down the throat. That's not falling pretty. down, I actually went back in there, I think I hit that, it was still not quite set enough right in that mesial aspect, so I used a little brush to get it off with. And I don't have to worry about the cement setting and, and being bonded to the adjacent teeth. And I would pick up a cotton plier, uh, try and get the stuff off with a, oh yeah, went for the final quick cure again. Just enough to start the tacking and the setting process. Sometimes getting the stuff out with a cotton plier can be a little challenging. Uh, 
I like a hemostat, it's better, but that just happened to be what we had in my hands. And you can see, it, it's a pain sometimes to get that stuff out with cotton pliers. Pick up a hemostat, it comes off a lot nicer with a hemostat, or certainly it flosses out pretty easily. So, after being frustrated with my cotton pliers, I said, oh, the heck with, give me a hemostat. Because the cotton pliers <laughs> just wasn't gripping it. You know, I had an older cotton plier and it just wasn't gripping it. So, we're able to grab that with the hemostat and move it all out. There we go. Most of it's out. Now we get the little tiny fine piece. And if we can't get it out of that, we'll go back in and floss it out. Yeah, make sure your your assistants hold it in place. You can see a little tiny shred of, of Teflon tape coming out. Cool. And then I always put a little glycerin over that because there's always an oxygen, inhibit, an oxygen inhibited layer that doesn't set. So we'll get, stop it right there, Ro. Back up, back up two or three frames. Sure. Yeah, right there. Okay. So I utilize the medium ice light in this particular one for the upper arch. Uh, I wasn't thinking far enough ahead. And you can see the medium ice light cuts right across tooth number 31 on the lingual. So I've got a couple of ways I can address this. One, I can stick a cotton roll in there, which I'll show you later on in a moment. But what I ended up doing, I took that out and put a medium DV ice light in. So just remember that one picture and then remember what it's going to look like with the medium DV ice light. Uh, the medium DV ice light is fabulous for these lower second molars, right hand or left hand side. Roll it. Stop it. So there I've got the medium DV ice light. And you can just see the difference in the isolation potential that we have right there. And, you know, the tongue's out of the way and everything is nice. So go ahead and roll from there. And here comes the next secret. Yeah, sometimes I use a cotton roll. Like I said, you could do this on the medium ice light. I use the medium DV ice light. Use everything that you can that's in your armamentarium. It just... Just, that's a little extra added safety right there, just in case they swallow and saliva comes up. So go ahead, roll them. And with the amber filter, you can see how nice that is. We cure it and that, that's pretty, go ahead and roll it on out. Okay, super. So these these videos that you get from me, you know, these these are just the down and dirty videos. Either the day to day procedures. You know, I'm in the office. I'm working. I think there's going to be something that's going to fun. I'll have my my assistant pick up my iPhone. Danny's becoming great at taking video. She gives you the real bird's eye view. So this is just happening in the middle of day to day procedures. Nothing staged. Nothing. You know, no protest. No uh, professional photography at all. So, so you know what's interesting, Dr. Hirsch, it's really nice to see you're the only one inside the mouth who yeah. have direct access to the entire procedure. I noticed the Teflon tape, the tip around that, and also the, the fact that the mouthpiece was riding on the occlusal surface of number 31, you, you could see that. So you just replace it, which which worked really nicely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, cotton rolls. So yeah. appreciate it's, it's that. It's real nice to replace it. So... Grab, grab a pencil and paper and Rose is going to, maybe you can post this for them someplace else because this, this is my cool little tool that we found. I'm going to stand up so you get a, a better view of this thing. So this is, this is my cool little tool that we found right there. Turn it sideways. It's got a little plunger right there. Cool. That grabs the Teflon and it really holds on really well. This is, it's the name of the company is called Hanel H A N E L out of Germany. Let's see. Cool. Well, we we can't okay, right. see that. H A N E L. Yeah. Very good. H A N E L out of Germany, and uh, this is called a contact point marker, a CPM, a contact point marker. So that, and then awesome. just regular, regular plumber's tape from Home Depot is what we use. You know, it's, it's cheap and it comes in a in a roll 100 yards long, and one roll will probably last you a couple of months. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Hirsch. Hey, folks, 
if you like the content, if you'd like to see other things, what Dr. Hirsch is going to be doing, as he mentioned, is just during the course of the day, as he's working on different procedures, as he's looking at different things based on the feedback we've had, we're going to share them. So thank you so much. Again, we'll see you all on Tuesday next week for the next installment of Dr. Tom's Tips Case of the Week. Cow. Sounds like fun everybody. Have a great day. It's good talking to you. Thanks for listening. And anything that I can help you guys with, let me know. Awesome. Thank day. you, sir. Have a great week. Take care, everyone. Appreciate it. If you like this, share it. Let us know. Take care. Thanks, gang. Bye-bye.